The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. Normally coming to you at 2 p.m. each day. Today I'm coming to you at 5 p.m. Andy Heck and I traded positions so he could go off to his son's 30th birthday. He needed to catch a plane and needed to get out by 4 so what can you say? A little different, a little change up out here today. Also, kind of a little different uh, show. I get to sit back, kind of look at what happened after the whole day, do a little bit of research, and uh, eh, take a, a more uh, relaxed view of what happened today. And, uh, you know, I guess there's a few things going on. Um, so why don't we talk about those just a little bit, and then we'll uh, get back uh, to some uh, history, as we always like in the show, and then uh, get into some charts and uh, take a look at what happened. S&P was up 12 points today. Dow was up 93. NASDAQ closed up 31. Now, the question is, what was uh, volume like? Um, down about 500 million shares on the total for the CBOE volume. And if you're just looking at the NYSE consolidated tape, uh, which uh, should have had about uh, a big day today or a good day would be about four, four and a half billion shares, was under three billion. So we didn't have a lot of volume, but you know, on a day like this where everybody's waiting to see what happens vis-a-vis um, -vis, uh, tariffs, I think a lot of people probably a little underwhelmed, and I. And to me, it was a hysteria uh, built by a lot of the financial media, especially CNBC. Um, just don't really – didn't understand it the whole week. Didn't understand it today. But the level of bitterness and hatred about this is, is – uh, I don't know. It just seems way out of whack as far as I can tell, uh, in comparison to things that actually matter. Um, I guess everybody wants to make it more than it was. People on both sides making it, uh, like I said, just a lot more than I think it was. So, of course, some of these steel stocks uh, are actually down uh, after, the, uh, after the announcement. Um, STLD was, uh, we'll look at all these, uh, almost 3%, SLX down 2%, RS down 2.4%, uh, AKS uh, down 4%, and uh, the, probably the biggest hit was CENX, which is an aluminum manufacturer. They were down 7.5%. Uh, U.S. Steel, uh, 3%, and uh, NUE down 2.6%. Uh, so... Is this anything that hasn't happened before? People build it up to something much larger than it should be, and then people sell the news. Has that it never happened before? Well, we know it's happened many, many times. And especially when the media gets this much into it, almost always a big letdown by the time it's over. Um Kind of interesting stuff, I guess, the, the stuff that may you may not have heard if you're just getting in your car or checking out things. You are, actually had a real job during the day. Uh, but uh, the uh, tariffs are going to be 25% uh, on steel, 10% uh, on aluminum, and those go into effect in about 15 days. If there's no deal on NAFTA in about 30 days, those will apply to uh, – both uh, Canada and uh, Mexico. Uh, any trans-shipped product will also get those same tariffs, and you will have to certify that the product was not made in China. Uh, so it won't really matter if they do try to trans-ship it. In fact, 
a huge amount of uh, steel in the last uh, few years has been transshipped uh, via Canada. So uh, just because it hits the dock in Canada and then hits the rails um, and comes in from Canada, still made in, in uh, China, and that's going to be the issue. So uh, I don't know. Um, I think everybody agrees that uh, there's a big trade deficit with China. question is how to handle it and uh, whether or not we can. Uh, are we just so mad at each other that we want to choke each other to death so that we can't even, on a stock show, talk about this? I don't know. We'll have to see. But uh, I've seen more bitterness in the last week over this than I've seen in anything. And I'm not exactly sure why. But uh, eh, maybe everybody's just having a bad week. You can always give me a call and tell me I'm all wet at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, as always, you can put a message in the den. And uh, yeah, you never know. Okay, so why don't we start off the show with just a little bit of history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1917 in Russia, the February Revolution starts because of uh, Russia's use of the Julian calendar. It begins when riots and strikes over the scarcity of food in uh, Petrograd um, erupt. One uh, week later, centuries of Tsarist rule in Russia ended up with the abdication of Nicholas II, and Russia took a dramatic step closer to communist revolution. A lot of people divorce this from a fairly large war going on at the time, the First World War, and just how horribly this war uh, on all sides, from uh, Germany to France and England, literally everybody couldn't throw away young men's life as fast as they wanted to. It was literally the idea that we're not going to even think we're going to shove people at each other, and eventually someone's going to win. And there's an old saying that everybody fights the last war, at least the uh, dumb ones do. And, of course, in World War II, what did the French have? A lot of carts, a lot of horses. Didn't stand up uh, more than a couple weeks to the new mechanized division kind of war that uh, Hitler brought. But uh, when you look at the causes of the rise of communism and its horrific and even worse outcomes of the Second World War, some what is it? Some 70 million people killed uh, through Stalin's reign, and uh, yeah, pretty much uh, the standard for communism. But on this day in 1917, it took a turn for the bitter worst. Okay. Let's go ahead and start looking at some stocks. Oh, already to the break. You know, it's going to be a quiet evening here. Give me a call. 877-927-6648. FNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your Money, work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls. Now. now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. And hopefully, John from Philly is on the line. Are you there? Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon to you, sir. David, so, I, um, I wanted to ask you about uh, stock indices, the SPY uh, ETF, and the yep. upcoming um, uh, quarterly options expiration next uh, Friday, uh, eight days from now, March 16th. Now, back on February 9th, when the S&P was making a low down at 2530, that was one week ahead of the February, what was that, February 16th monthly expiration. options expiration. Yep. And the, uh, the options expiration and all the shorts embedded in the market there came together and gave us a good short squeeze rally February 12th through the 16th. What I wanted to do is ask you if you've got any data, any clues that uh, can help us make a educated guess as to whether another short squeeze rally next week into March 16th is likely or not. Well, there were a couple of things going on at the end of that uh expiration in February that we do not have this time. So I'm going to tell you the differences. First of all, every single stock uh, going into that expiration or every single sector that I look at, including one that I think I made for you uh, for the uh, for just the uh, uh, defense contractor once. Um, they were everything was under a nine day moving average. So everything was it fairly sold off. We're somewhere kind of in the middle right now. We're not, in my sector charts, we're not at highs in, except a few things. We're not at lows except a few things. And there are a lot of them just in that kind of meaty middle where you don't get a very good read. I always like to put trades on 
when my back's against the wall and you have a fairly short or small window for being wrong or until you know you're wrong. And we don't have that now in a great deal of these sectors. What we do have is a great many stocks with options showing slightly lower uh, over the next week. And I'm showing on the screen here the uh, uh, S&P, uh, which is actually the SPY, uh, from last night. I haven't. It takes me about an hour to download and uh, and uh, clear the data before I get these charts at night. Uh, so I'll do that later tonight, and I'll have a much better read. They may have been waiting to see actually what was in the the bill today or in the uh, in that. So I, there were a lot of people buying right at the close. So the question is, are those offsetting a lot of options? And I just don't know yet. But as of last night, option market makers had a fairly decent idea uh, that um, they thought that we were probably going to close, at least on the SPY, somewhere under 270. Maybe 271. So, you know, is 30, 40 points lower that big a deal? On the cash, I think that's about 2680. There are a lot of things that kind of tell me that that's kind of where this is at. Um, when you look at some of the other big stocks that this technique works well on almost all the time, like Apple, um, you also have fairly decent indications that these things are pointing at very uh, much lower numbers. Um, in Apple, this would not surprise me at all to close at 170 or even to 165 across the next week. Now, maybe this changes tonight, and I'll talk about it in my show tomorrow. But this is pretty much what everything looks like. And you don't have everything either oversold or under uh, overbought. So... I think we're at the point where we can move fairly briskly either up or down, but my guess and everything that I look at says lower, but not that much lower. Okay, thank you for that. Um, just another observation. Back there during that week of February 5th, and then the following the 12th, the reports I was reading, and I don't know if they're accurate or not, <clears throat> but the reports I was reading indicated the uh, stock buying sector, known as the corporate treasurer's sector, was buying as aggressively and in volumes not seen in a couple of quarters, just in response to the price decline. And cash, uh, cash repatriation uh, linked to the new tax law, that sort of thing. And then, of course... During that week of the 12th of February, there were uh, all sorts of shorts, new shorts, that were in the market that uh, were there to be squeezed and turned back into buyers. So, I, I think uh, we, that... we can see corporate treasurers buying uh, shorts, buying back their shorts during that week. And then since, uh, now you've clearly mentioned there's a, uh, a small group of sectors that are back to new highs and very strong. But uh, overall, we've seen what what certainly feels to me like distribution selling. And my question to you is, is that something that you suspect is going on and by whom? Um, I suspect there is more than distribution selling. It looks to me more like... Uh, sector rotation. So I'm seeing a lot of people get out of some stuff that they've got some huge profits in and moving that money somewhere else. And maybe all of that hasn't been put back in. Maybe it's all sitting on the shelf waiting for the next time we hit a little air pocket to go right back in, like you said, back in February. But, you know, I don't... I would like to see a few things that I don't see now to really say that we were going higher. Um, I'm showing on the screen here now, which is just a put call uh, ratio from February. And you know, this thing 
pretty much bounces around from, I don't know, about 40% to 60%. Well, 96% on February 14th. Um, so literally everybody that was doing anything was buying puts on February 14th. And the result was a little bit more than I was looking for. I was looking for, what, over 2,700? I think it went to, what, 2738 or something um, in those last couple of days. So, you know, any of these things that I talk about, if people keep piling on and make the thing worse, it, the market just goes farther that way, right? So, you know, you get people almost always, it seems like, the most heavy, heaviest shorting or the biggest put-call ratio ends up being the bottom or some kind of uh, massive move higher. Uh, it seems like they just can't, the timing is just too good. They think the world's going to hell in a handbasket, and that's when the market really turns. You want to hang on a minute? David, uh, I'm going to sign off. Thanks so much. Okay. That's re uh, very helpful. Appreciate that. You bet. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, I'm going to take a little audible here and decide to kind of look at something else. We've talked about my sector charts for a while, and the data was available, so I went ahead and downloaded it during the break and ran it. So we can start looking at these sectors.
Uh, my sector oscillator charts are, of course, nine-day uh, moving averages for all the companies in that sector. We're looking at the S&P uh, or SPYs here. So there's going to be the standard 500 stocks. How many of those are above or below the nine-day moving average? Um, help, uh, Basil helped me kind of develop uh, some of these ideas. I did all the programming. Uh, and he added one feature that was kind of interesting, which is looking for this kind of band, this gray band below, where you're kind of in a mushy area where not a lot happens. Once you get above it, you find a lot of very quick downsides. When you're down uh, below it, you get kind of reversals. These are kind of the, uh, if you get reversals where they're just not very far uh, beyond the bands, those tend to be fairly minor reactions. Uh, where you actually see these things, as we talked about in February, where everything is literally uh, the stock, every stock in this, almost every single one in the SPY, only a handful, maybe five or 10, were above their nine day moving average. That's the giant washouts. And that's where, uh, when we talked about that Friday, um, where I went long into that uh, February 16th expiration, that was it. So <clears throat> it's not uncommon to see kind of a couple of pushes higher. You really can't get anything going on. You got to push down lower, but it doesn't really move that much. You got to push higher now and you're not getting that much either. So the, the question is on, on this is, are, do we have any kind of strong momentum either to the upside or the downside? And the answer is it's a small bias to the upside, but generally these small biases, this is where you can see failures fairly quickly, although I'm not predicting one. Let's take a look at some of the other ones out here because I'm getting to look at these just as you are. Let's go ahead and look at that defense contract uh, sector oscillator and see that. Um, again, you want to kind of, uh, if everybody is on a sell, you want to buy. And if everybody's on a buy, uh, generally a pretty good opportunity to sell. Uh, one of the most interesting things out of doing all these is just seeing uh, how you almost can't go wrong when a sector all the stocks in a sector are under the nine-day moving average of buying that sector. A uh, little different at highs. A lot of times you can spend a lot of time uh, overbought at highs. Eventually, these things like to do both double bottoms and double tops. You get a lot more range on double tops, though. It is a lot more uh, nuanced on that. So in the ITA, which is the defense sector, we went down, we kind of broke through no man's land. Uh, we had kind of a small low, uh, gave us, uh, you could have got into that. I tend to wait until these things are either all the way at highs or all the ways at lows. I mean, literally everything uh, in a sector. That's kind of your best risk reward. And even before I had these charts, kind of, you'd go through you know, a whole bunch of charts in that sector and go, okay, these things are all pretty much washed out or they're all way overbought. It's just that it can remain way overbought for five, six, seven days, where generally you, know, you see these uh, uh, oversold conditions last for maybe three or four days. So one of the nice things about this chart is that you do get a little bit of ads up. You already know that you're within a couple of days of a high, or a couple of days of a low. But in this case, you're kind of in this meaty middle where there isn't a lot of signals, not a good place to put on new trades, not a good place to, to uh, take off uh, your position if you're already in one. You're just kind of out here waiting for hopefully your uh, premonition of what was going to happen to begin with already. Now, interestingly enough, gold charts out here like the gold miners. Let's take a quick look at that. These things are always heaven and hell. And it works very good uh, for uh, gold stocks, i.e. to buy why everybody's selling and to sell why everybody's buying. Um, we got a little bit of a, of a low out here on the 28th of February, and it's kind of been meandering up. But again, I don't like, you know, trading for kind of short money. 
you certainly had a, a fairly oversold low uh, coming into the 28th, but you haven't really got much in the way of upside in the uh, gold miners. Let's take a look at the GDXJ fairly quickly and look at that sector. See how many, uh, is that not in there? Oh, there it is. Okay. Kind of the same thing, although, again, I can probably make a much better case that you're in a big triangle for these gold miners. Uh, but you had a lot of them go higher three days ago. Never really did anything, didn't break to a new high. Now you're kind of going down. You're really not breaking to a new low. So this is what I'm kind of talking about where the market's not offering a lot of clues in a lot of these about where we're going. Wanted to take a look at a few other ones. Let's look at the financials today real quick. Uh, now the financials are kind of the same thing. You've got these little triangles uh, patterns setting up, but you're getting fairly close to everything being overbought in the XLF. Uh, you might have a couple more days where this thing goes higher, but that's, uh, and some of the stocks get over that nine day moving average. But you're really not seeing that move uh, the needle, at least in the ETF, very far or very much. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's look at a couple more here out here today. Uh, the XLE, everybody keeps uh, thinking this thing is going to run. Uh, here's a very good indication that you found a bottom back in February. This thing just continue to be smashed for almost 12 trading days. Finally, it comes up off the lows, but it doesn't do that much, and it's still kind of on its sell. Uh, my guess is that this would probably retest the 64 uh, low in the XLE back on the 9th. And if you did so on a lighter volume, that's probably – a indication that you might have a buy if you can get in there with light volume. But again, you saw all of them go to way oversold. You've got them all the way overbought, but way, way overbought is not very much higher. That's telling you that this continues to be probably the weakest sector that we have uh, in the uh, markets right now. Uh, to, to, let's take a look at some of the other ones out here. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, Hack, which is uh, probably the strongest ETF that there is right now in the security portion of uh, the Internet and uh, computers. H-A-C-K is the symbol on this one. Um, this one came off, sold off a great deal uh, in the ninth day. And no damage in the actual chart. We've gone on to make new highs and even a little bit higher today. We'll be back in a minute. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. 
And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member fdic and equal housing lender the taz profile scanner plus developed by john logan and his team is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade let the taz profile scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks etfs commodities futures and forex right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the taz profile scanner plus right at tfnn.com and when you sign up you gain instant access to john logan Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And uh, got a question from the den, and that is, as you see it, is the Fed... Uh, liquidating 20 billion this month and the next going to be uh, another problem from the SPY as it was in February and if you're just catching up or new to the show uh, as uh, Janet Yellen left the one thing that she did was instead of decide to sell the 20 billion dollars worth of uh, treasury bonds that she had to uh, go to market um, over a month she did it all in a day and that freaked out the market, which really kind of started the downside. Uh, and the ripple effects ran through the rest of the market. Uh, unclear whether she did it with or without Powell's knowledge what she was going to do. I mean, they were going to sell it. The question was, how do they sell it? Do they just dump it all on the market one day? Well, that's what they did uh, in February, and that's what caused all the issues. Uh, rather suddenly. A lot of people were out of position, and maybe they did it to get a few people off the uh, heavy uh, leveraged wagon in the marketplace. Uh, the question is, will they continue to do it again like that? And I think the answer is probably a pretty good no. Um, didn't really do it, you know, so much last week. Uh, so they'll do it nice and slow every day and get the market used to having a, a decent sized seller in the markets. Um, so, but is that kind of a constant overhang? I think it is, uh, but, that, but that's, you know, if I didn't even know about that, I would continue to look at these sector charts where we see a lot of these things just not getting out of their own way off the bottom. Now, maybe they will in the future, but it looks to me like um, the one that told me, even before everything blew up in our face, this REIT B&Q, as the symbol on it, the ETF for the REITs, was the one that broke about a week before. And I didn't put the pieces together about maybe how all this stuff was supposed to work. We did know it was sitting there banging around that 80 level and finally closed under it uh, significantly. Uh, but bonds are kind of that issue. So as we look at what's happening, to me, the biggest problem right now is uh, that we see these REITs doing uh, not so well. And uh, the other thing would be looking at the TLT. The TLT just continues to tell me that it wants to come down and test 116. Uh, it's done nothing but uh, kind of go a little sideways on continuing lighter volume each day. And that also tells me, I suspect that it's going to break this 116 area 
from February 21st, and there's even a, a longer one that goes back to March 13th of 2017. And that may be the trigger that maybe spooks the little people out of the market. Again, I don't think it is the cattle drive that it was in February 1st. But, you know, if we pulled back 60 points on the S&P cash, eh, that probably wouldn't be a big deal. And let's say that we pull back 60 points and we bounce 20 points and we close a week from tomorrow at 2,700 on the S&P cash. It's not the end of the world, and I'm not predicting it. I'm just thinking that, yes, in a best-case scenario, I think we go sideways. In a worst-case scenario, maybe we get back down to 2,650 or 2,640 and bounce up to 2,700 for next uh, Friday. Uh, as op as the market goes down, people will buy more puts. People will buy, uh, you know, you'll see the put call ratio go high. You'll see everybody pile on the short side. And that's almost always the best part uh, because, you know, when the market does turn around, you're going to get a pretty nice whiplash to the upside. So I just continue to think that this is, and when we look at that REIT uh, V and Q, it doesn't show anything uh, that makes me think that we've got a fairly decent uh, bottom in the rest of these sectors. And I think, you know, if we're just thinking that maybe uh, the uh, the uh, internet sector is going to take us higher, or the semis, it just does. I don't think that we can go higher on two or three. Uh, energy continues to make me think that crude can easily slip below 60 bucks. I think there's some other things going on that could uh, do it. Where's my SMHs in here? There we go. Let's take a quick look at that tonight and see how it's doing. You know, this thing actually could, is pretty overbought too. Now, it doesn't mean it couldn't get more overbought, but uh, let's pop up this. Let's do the SMHs on my charts too and the sector chart. You know, today we got up with uh, what, 4. Point, uh, what did we get? 3.8 million shares today, 4.5 million shares yesterday. You're kind of banging around up here about that kind of volume. It's not horribly bearish, but one of the things that I've always had in the back of my mind is this November 24th high of uh, 2017 for 7.75 million shares that's never really been excelled above that 105 area. Uh, and the question is, could I see this 105 area come back down? Uh, and the answer is kind of yes. Let's take a look at the options in that, see if I have, if I have them in there. Hey, yep, I do. Okay. Let's do that. So this is, again, one of the reasons why I'm, I haven't, I've got, long term, I'm bullish. Short term, maybe across the next uh, 14 days, I'm very cautious. And I don't have any short term long positions on. But this is kind of why. Everything I'm looking at, we'll see how this changes after tonight on options. But everything I'm showing in options shows that there's a fairly significant bias to the downside in these. And again, could there be a lot of this could be uh, uh, buying protection to the downside in case anything happens? But yeah, uh, but if it truly was all that, it probably would even be a lot lower than that. Um, you know, could we in the SMHs close at 105? or something like that, 106. I don't think that would be a whole lot. And I mean, where we're at now, at what, 10, at basically 110, um, it wouldn't be a big deal to go and give up, you know, five points in a couple of days um, and get, get kind of back in here. Maybe we get in there with light volume and maybe there's a better place to buy. Could the market still go higher? It could, and it has in the past. It's just, I don't see a great deal to be made uh, and the risk reward for new trades here, probably not all that exciting. So again, we'll look at a few more of these, but um, I'm kind of waiting for the whites of their eyes and maybe some kind of better signal. Uh, we continue to see kind of the volume uh, as we showed today was not all that exciting. 
Uh, now, again, everybody was waiting for the news to come out. Tomorrow, that will not be an issue. I think we get the numbers, the gerbs numbers early in the morning, and it'll be uh, have at it, boys, for the rest of the day. So we'll be back after this, and we'll wrap the show up. Still have plenty of time to email me or give me a call at 877-927-6648. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You don't buy into that nonsense, do do you? You know, you can't time the markets. I didn't. And in 2006, I set out on a mission to do just that. I began by surrounding myself with the greats like Tom O'Brien, Larry Pesavento, David White, and Basil Chapman. I read countless books and even looked to the moon and planets for answers. Now, we both know that trading is 80% mental. So I learned the exact tools that Tony Robbins uses to overcome fear. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And last March, the folks at Timer's Digest began tracking my newsletter signals, which through January 18th, 2018 placed me as the number one gold timer for that exact time frame. Now, I can't officially be recognized until Timers Digest has a full year of signals, but clearly, I've learned how to time the markets, and I'd like to teach you how to do that as well. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain access to my live and archive workshops where I show you the exact same patterns that earn me this number one ranking. If you're looking for great market calls and an education, sign up for Mastering Probability today at TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're going to kind of close the show up today <clears throat> looking at the IBB. Um, we saw the sector have a huge downside. Um, we actually bought this in the daily newsletter. Um, it ran up to about 110, and that was it. Uh, kind of gone sideways a little bit. You had a little pop back above it, but now you're back in where uh, this thing has been on sale before. Uh, and maybe you get a couple more days out of it. Uh, a lot of times this thing does lead two or three days, so maybe it's next Monday or Tuesday before we see some selling in this one. It's just that there's not a lot of juice behind any of these, and you know, you're starting to see a lot of these get to the top part of the sector without any push behind them. Um, and no real retest of the high volumes that we saw on those, uh, what was this, on the 9th of uh, February. 
Um, and a lot of these things look like they could just get back at least back into these candles. You kind of had that on the, uh, what is that, the uh, fifth uh, of that. You did kind of come down to 106. You instantly reversed by the end of the day. So you've got kind of a little bit of a base out here. You just don't have any real follow through. So maybe I, I'm not, I don't have a position today. I probably won't have a t position tomorrow, but I'll be looking at options and probably puts starting on Monday for expiration week. And I would not be surprised to see a push lower, maybe for two or three days, get everybody all hot and bothered, uh, more into the world discussions and maybe a nice little pop up to 2700 by the end of the week. And that would be kind of a typical uh, kind of uh, bear trap for expiration. And then maybe we head up after that and into the end of the month. So just some thoughts out here. We'll talk more about it tomorrow at my usual time at 2 o'clock. I don't hear any music. Am I out there? Hopefully we are. Oh, does this segment run longer because he's a different show? Is this the old clock? Huh. Maybe we don't have the clock. Don't hear anything. So, anyway. Oh, segment does run longer. Man, no one told me. How much more time do I have? Probably just a minute. Doesn't run that much longer, does it, in this time frame? Well, eh, you never know. Anyway, uh, as I said, wouldn't be surprised for a push down lower, maybe Wednesday, Thursday morning, and then a pop back up, maybe to 2,700. That's kind of my game theory right now. I don't know if there's much else to change it, but uh, that's kind of it. Any, any thoughts on when this segment actually is over? Uh We'll talk to the engineer. I Normally, I hear the music, and I don't hear anything now. So, I don't know. Maybe I just tap dance for the last minute. Uh, private, five seconds, five minutes? Can't. We're already at 5.57. So, that would be it. Does it go to 5.59? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if we have any other emails out here for the end of the day. I don't think it. Uh, got a question to look at the IBB. Maybe I've got time to squeeze that in. Don't know. No one tells me. Five doesn't mean anything to me. Okay. Um, IBM. Take a quick look at that. Again, a lot of these stocks in triangle formations. Oh, here we go. Uh, and IBM is the same. You want to fade... The first big pop out of these triangle formations. Maybe we'll see that tomorrow. Talk to you again tomorrow at 2 by regular time. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters.